Hey everybody, this is EZ, and welcome to a new Let's Play of a game that I didn't actually know I was going to be able to Let's Play. But I found it on Steam the other day, and I figured I have no choice but to Let's Play this game. I have no idea how this is going to go. Um, a little... No, when I do my last place, I don't do practice runs ahead of time, so it's one of those things where, yeah, I don't really do the practice runs. And the sound will be fixed in the second episode. This is more of a quote-unquote tech demo, and I'm going to play a little bit of the game, just so I can get everything set right. Um, and yeah, if you haven't guessed by now what this game is... I'm going to skip this intro right now and come. Let us play. Welcome to Let's Play Final Fantasy VIII. To apologize for that, this is on Steam, so that little thing popped up and I didn't like it. And now we are starting this game. This actually is not my first Final Fantasy game. This actually is my s third one. And I'm going to be quiet for this scene here, so we just get the starting out of the way. Now that's how you open a game. Now folks, don't get me wrong, I have seen the Spoonie review of this game, and I have seen H.C. Bailey's Let's Play of this game. Mine is not going to be as in-depth, because I'm not going to go as in-depth as H.C. Bailey, but I think I know this game fairly well enough to do this. And I'm also not going to talk to everybody, but I will talk to some people. Who are you feeling today? Well, my forehead hurts, but since this is a Let's Play, I'm trying to do the best I can. Okay. Take it easy next time you're here. 
I'm not going to give everybody voices. I might sometimes. Looks like your eyes are focusing. You should be fine. Say your name for me. Now, because I can do this, I'm going to. His name is Squall, but since I'm the main, I'm the one playing the game, his name is EZ. Because I'm EZ. I'll take it easy whenever I want to. Cypher. Why don't you just shove a sword up his ass? That's a good way to do it. I mean, he's Cypher, so... Yeah. Never done a guy like that was named Cypher. And I will give voices to some people. Squall's gonna have my voice just because... He's me in this game. It'll leave a scar! No! Now, the first time I played this game, I actually had no idea who that was. I actually thought it was my mom. <laughs> and then later in the game, you realize it's not. Here's what I want to know. When I was in school, why did I never have a teacher that looked like that? Oh, wait. I did. I had one look just like I had one look just like her actually. I had no idea that you're a cipher. Why she get that voice? I'm not gonna read most of the dialogue. I'll read Squall's dialogue because I'm portraying Squall in this game. Just keep walking. Ignore her. Not really. What's so funny? Really? No more complex than you think. If you guys don't notice, he does actually have a band-aid on his head, which is interesting. It's none of your... Christus. Screw you. Now, I was saying before... This is not my first Final Fantasy game. This is my third. I count 10 and 10 2 as one game. My first one was 10, then 10 2. Then I played 12. Then my brother bought this game, but he still lived with me. He bought all the Final Fantasy games, and I played this one next. Now, I have played this game a few times. Uh, I've beaten it, I think, three or four times actually. And one thing I'm going to try to do is get Triple Triad. Uh, not do Triple Triad, actually. And you may have noticed that the game audio has cut out completely here. That's because this part of it is actually post-commentated because in the original recording I had a mic issue at this point in the recording where it was very, very staticky and it physically hurt to listen to, so I'm not going to put you guys through that. So I am just going to post-commentate this part of the game. Uh, this is for this one episode. I fixed it in, previous, in future episodes, so don't worry. It's just the rest of this episode. And what we're doing right now is we're actually sitting in a classroom, and we are listening to Keistus talk. Cypher. Don't injure your partner while training. Yeah, don't kill me. I'm just trying to spar with you, you jackass. And Cypher's steaming mad because he can't stick a sword in my face. Great friend to have is Cypher. And he just thought, why do you talk to me? He's just, why? What did I ever do? But I don't want to. I want to sit down here. I don't want to talk to you. You're mean. And you're hot. And you go to the computer here and you actually can get two GFs. Which GFs in this game are guardian forces. And they are... Eight like Aeons in 10, or if you play 12, Esper, stuff like that. We get two GFs, and fun thing we can do in this game is we can name all of our GFs that we get. And I will be doing that. And the first one we get is Kezakotl. Nah, I don't like that name. Seeing as how Kezakotl is a lightning monster, kind of like a lightning god, um, I think I'm going to name him Zeus. The Greek god of lightning, he's the Greek god of gods, but he always used a lightning bolt as his main weapon, so Zeus makes sense of this. And since this game is on Steam, I get stupid achievements every time I get a GF. And this one is Shiva, and this name doesn't have a reference to anything. It's just something that I thought was really interesting and funny. Um, it takes me a while to think, actually, of the name for this, but it's not too bad, actually, the name that I 
picked, um, she's going to be known as Frostburn. And Frostburn, that actually, it's not a reference to anything mythological or anything. It's a reference to Diablo 2 when I played that game. Um, one of my first online characters, and character that I remade actually, is named Frostburn. So, I flat out named this one Frostburn. There's no reason for that. It's just I thought it would be funny to do that. And now we are going to go up here and see what Quistus actually wants from us. I don't feel a need to do this, but Quistus is hot, so I figured why not. Have I been to the fire cavern? No, I was in the hospital all morning because Cypher slit me face with a sword. Of course I've been to the fire cavern. Let's get, what, you're, you're coming with me to the fire cavern? You're coming with me to a fire cavern where you can burn and die. Well, at least on the field trips you get accompanied. That's kind of cool. <laughs> and we're going to walk down the hall and we run into somebody right here who we later find out is named Selfie. And you have to be nice to people. You can't be a complete douche or an emo like like uh, Squall is. Uh, when I talk bad about him, he's going to be called Squall. When I talk good about him, he's going to be called Easy. <laughs> because I named him Easy in the game, and that's the way I'm going to roll with it. So, yeah. Now, what we do here, you get to show her around a little bit, show her on the garden, which isn't that bad, actually. I mean, going around the garden, I really only ever go to three or four places in the garden ever, but it's still nice to go over now and then. And I didn't talk to that guy sitting right there. I do that in the next episode, I believe. Talking to him and net you cards for Triple Triad, which is actually a fun little side quest to do, which I'm going to do because you can get some really good items modifying the card into items and stuff, and I'm going to do that. And the directory is down here. I'm not recording this commentary in my normal LP commentary just because it's post-commentated and I already recorded it once. Bottom Garden is pretty big, if you notice that. Uh, she has a question, how does she use it? You just click on it. I don't get that. Move the cursor and press X. Um, is she playing it with a controller, too? Or no? <laughs> because that's kind of weird if she's walking around holding a controller in her hands. Majority of students live in dorms. You can rest and change in the dorms. Really? You can sleep in the dorms? It's a big rush for hot dogs. I want a bloody hot dog! In all the time of this game, they hype up the hot dogs like no other. They mention it about four or five times, but you never, never get to eat a friggin' hot dog. Why? I want a damn hot dog. <laughs> you never get to see a hot dog eat this game until way, 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 way later. I see at the end of the game you get to see a hot dog for the first time. What's the doctor's name? I don't know. Madame fixes my cut face from Cypher. That's what I'm going to call her. And the, tra the training center makes no sense. Why is it only open at night? When there's people asleep, and there's live monsters roaming around. Wouldn't that be something you want to open during the day, so you, I don't know, you can have guards making sure the students don't kill themselves by going up against a T-Rex R? That's too strong for them to fight at the moment. But, eh, that's square logic at its finest for you right there, so there's nothing you can really do about it. And I know this episode is mildly boring just because there's no sound, but I promise you, you will thank me if you heard the original editing of this. Where there is no... Where the audio is so scratched up and so staticky because my mic messed up for some reason. I don't know why the mic messed up, but it did. And it was really, really staticky. And I promise you, you would not want to hear that original recording. And I'm running around the library looking for something here, like an idiot, even though... it's I can get it now. I read in a guide that I can get it now. It's actually... Um, I can see it. I can actually see it. And that's framed there. It's an item called the Occult Fan. Um, I can't remember actually what it is. Actually, I believe the Occult Fan hints at a future GF, if I remember correctly. Because I know there are three types of magazines you can read. Uh, Pet Pals is f f something later in the game. Combat King something later in the game. And I believe the Occult Fan hints at how to get a GF. But I already know how to get it, so I'm not worried. And... Now, since we're going to save right here, so you guys see how you save, you hit the save sphere, go out of the save menu, slots one. It uses blocks, because it's a PS1 game on Steam. 
And we get to continue to move on down. And Kisa said she'd meet us at the front gate. And I will refer to calling her Kistis or Quistis or whatever. I will mix the names because I originally called her Quistis. And later I heard it was Kistis. So I call it the way that I hear it. So it's Kistis to me. Or Quistis to me, Kistis and the LP. So I'll probably mix and match them a few times, but that's not a big deal. And we get to keep on walking. That is a draw point right there. I could draw now, but I didn't junction anything yet, so... I'll go over junctioning when I actually do it. And now she's just saying the prefix place of GS. Uh, I'm not going to show the tutorial. I'll explain that later. Tutorial. She gets your tutorial on pretty much everything in this game, and it is very, very annoying, just because it's literally everything in the game. She gives you a tutorial on. She gives you a tutorial on. Here's a junction menu. What you can do for junctioning is you take your GFs and you literally equip them to yourself, and they give you abilities you can use: magic, draw, a GF item, are the basics that you can get. And as you level up the GS, which you level up by combat normally and stuff like that, you can get other abilities like strength plus 20% or um, first strike, and initiate, all that kind of stuff. And they learn abilities like HPJ, which is HP junction, vitality junction, stuff like that. And you put magic, you actually put your given magic that you get from enemies, your card junctioning and everything like that, in your card mods into your character, increasing your stats. Your stats by themselves are not very good. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run down to the beach, because at the beach, well, the enemies are challenging at the beach. They, they give you, I believe, 6 AP of fight, and AP is what you use to get the GS abilities. And they also give you an item that I'm looking for called the fish fin. And that's what I'm aiming for. I want the fish fin just because... It can you can convert that into water, and water is very very good to have because it's probably one of the strongest things at this point in the game. You equip to your strength, which I will do. And I am using a PS, I'm using an Xbox 360 controller attached to my computer to play this, and I can't at this point of recording cannot figure out how to use the trigger. In the next episode, because I off-screen grind after this episode, I do figure out how to use the trigger, and it's kind of funny, because I was pushing the button the whole time, I was just getting the timing of it wrong, <laughs> which made me feel like a complete idiot. But, yeah. And... We're just going to be hunting fish for a little while. These fish, when you do a certain amount of damage, sometimes it's a little, sometimes it's a lot, they will jump out of the ground, like that, and you can attack them and do full damage. When they're in the ground, you can't do much damage to them at all. And an interesting thing about this game is the monsters will actually level up with you. If you're level 1, they're level 1. If you're level 100, they're level 100. However, in this game, when the monster, when you level up, you get very small stat increases. Sometimes maybe not even a stat increase at all. You get maybe slightly more health. Whereas the monsters always get a stat increase, and it's always in greater increments than you. Which actually puts you at a disadvantage in the game, which I kind of enjoy. Because you're not always over... I mean, you're going to be really powerful if you want a junction, right? But you're not always overpowered. You're not always like that. And it's a nice change to see that every once in a while. That you're not always the most overpowered person in the world. And I really like that. And now that I shut off one battle here... Uh, I think it's a good time to... End this off here. Actually, I'm going to go off-screen grind for a little bit. Um, you can actually... I changed my GF Frostburn here to learn the ability Ice Magic or Fine, which gives me water and ice magics, which is why I did that. I'm going to off screen grind a little bit, and you can save in the middle of the battlefield here. You don't have to be at a safe sphere as long as you're not in a town, you can save anywhere. And, but what will happen in the next episode? How far do I level grind? Find out next time.